And I just picked some peppers for salsa, mostly sweet, but there are some jalapenos and some Fresnos. And these, well, these would be mildly hot if they were red, but when they're like this, they're pretty mild. Only hot, the only thing hot on them is the seeds. Well, my eyes are still stinging from cutting up the onions, but while my eyes are stinging, I might as well put on some gloves and start cutting up hot peppers. I'll put some of the seeds in uh, to keep it hot, but I, I won't put all of them in. Good morning. It is August the 12th, first morning of school. It's a rainy, dreary morning here in Indiana. Uh, it's not the first day of school for me, though. It's my first official day of retirement, I guess. Anyway, to me. Last week, I prepped my peppers for salsa. There's some sweet ones on top, some hot ones on the bottom. I think it's about, I will look at the recipe, eight cups or so. I need another four cups of onions. I prepped those. Stan is out cleaning up a few more onions for me. Uh, let's show you the recipe. Here's my recipe for homemade salsa. It makes about 30 pints. You water bath them for about 20 minutes. I have a steam canner that I use instead of a water bath, but it's basically the same thing. So, this takes about 32, 28 to 32 cups of peeled tomatoes, same way that we did it for the spaghetti sauce. 6 to 8 cups onions, 8 cups of sweet peppers, 4 to 5 cups of hot peppers, gloves, 5 whole jalapenos. So 5 of them, I will just cut off the caps, use the seeds and all. Uh, another big can of tomato paste that anywhere from 75 ounces to 111 ounces. Uh, yeah, I think the whole can for this is a bit much. It's a bit thick for salsa, so I'm not going to use quite the whole can. Four tablespoons of lime juice. Again, I keep that squeezed in, in the freezer. I squeeze it in ice cube trays. Keep it in the freezer in a, in a glass jar. A cup of cider vinegar. Four tablespoons of sugar. If needed, a teaspoon of vitamin C powder. Uh, if it needs a little bit more acidity. I don't think I always put that in. Four to five tablespoons of salt. I use Celtic salt or Himalayan pink sea salt. I will cook this for or boil it for anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half and then I will put it in the cans. So as I said, same procedure as last time. Start with tomatoes, rinse them off a little bit, cut the core out, put a little X on the bottom, have a pot of boiling water, put them in there for about a minute and then they'll go back and the, use this, scoop them in the cold water, slip off the skins, get this nice, this bowl nice and full and then blend it with the peppers and onions and then put it in the big stock pot. The first batch has been scalded for a couple of minutes and as you see the skins just come skins come right off. Some of these are a bit challenging to cut the core out of. Yeah this thing the core goes all the way through. This kind and most of our tomatoes are like this. They're pretty easy. It's just a simple little core. But not these big guys. I have enough to get started here. Now it's time to start blending. Put some tomatoes on the bottom of the blender, throw in some peppers and onions, and then I'll put everything over here in the big uh, pot. I'm getting down to the end, I just need to grind up uh, the tomatoes with the rest of these. Those are mostly jalapenos in there. So see how I do it? I have the tomatoes on the bottom, so they have the most juice, and then I have the peppers on top, and that will grind up really nicely. This is what that same batch looks like blended up. It smells wonderful. Doesn't look like salsa yet, but it will after I've cooked it down. Compared to all the ingredients that go into my spaghetti sauce, this is pretty simple. Once I have my peppers, both kinds of peppers, onions and tomatoes all blended up, then my four tablespoons of lime juice. I have another pint of lime cubes that I've frozen, some sugar, some apple cider vinegar. I have another whole gallon out in the shed that I bought in Shipshawana, my Himalayan pink salt, and this is optional, uh, citric acid. I'll use maybe about a half teaspoon of that. And that's it. All right, I'm setting the timer for 45 minutes. This has everything in it except for the tomato paste. I'm gonna end up using the whole can of uh, tomato paste as it is. It's not that thick. I think I must have dumped in extra tomatoes. I know I dumped in extra tomatoes and probably had some extra onions too. So, I'll give it a taste make sure there's enough vinegar and salt in it. Should def definitely make 30 pints. I've only been at this for a little over an hour. I prepped the 
peppers and onions ahead of time, which helped a lot. It's only about 9.15 in the morning now. Even though it hasn't cooked down yet, I'm going to give it a taste test. Kind of see how hot it is, if it has enough vinegar and salt in it. Oh my goodness, that's actually wonderful. Not too hot, not too mild. It's just sort of a medium. It tastes like fresh salsa right now. It's great. It's great just the way it is. But I will cook that down and process it. Again, you can make this as hot or mild as you want, depending on how many hot peppers you use, how hot the peppers are, how many seeds you use. For our family, this is perfect. For you guys, it might not be hot enough. Now, 45 or 55 minutes later, it's time now to uh, start filling all these jars, and we'll give a we'll get a count, and see how many we get. Before I get too far ahead of myself, same procedure as with the spaghetti sauce, where I'm going to wipe off the rim. I checked all these jars um, with my finger to make sure that there were no chips or blemishes. We'll wipe these off, with a damp paper towel, and then with a dry paper towel. Once I'm sure that they're clean and dry. Then, I have water that I've warmed up with uh, brand new lids. I'll put the lid on top, put the ring on top, and then uh, twist the ring until it's just firmly tight. And this is my steam canner. You might recognize it as the pan that I, one of the pans that I used to cook spaghetti sauce. But this time we use it backwards. Don't worry about the rest there. This is the bottom. We put in six cups of water here we go and this will make the steam the only tricky part on this is noticing when it has that eight inch plume of of a uh, steam coming out where's the circle oh you'll see it all right let's see how many fit in here if they were quart jars we would only fit seven but i'm thinking we might be able to fit eight and with a narrow mouth i'll be able to fit even more uh, maybe only seven you see the little little vent hole there? I'm going to turn this on medium heat. And when I see when you see a column, it says an 8-inch column of steam coming out. Then you start the timer. And again, it's steaming now, a nice column of steam, although you might not be able to see it. So I set the timer for 20 minutes. It is steaming like crazy, so I'm going to lower the heat from medium to um, medium low. I don't want it boiling out all six cups of water, that's for sure. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, to remind you of again this time, is I did start with sterilized jars. And this time I just had them in the dishwasher on heated dry, took them out of there. Uh, you can also wash them with hot soapy water, rinse them off well, and put them in the oven. I still have some more jars in there like that. Put them in the oven at 225 for 15 minutes. 20 minutes is up, um, take it off the heat, or a gas stove, I just turned the heat off. I have the lid ajar a little bit to let some more steam escape, because if you take the lid off right at once, you are going to get a steam burn. I'll let it like this for about a minute, and then I'll take the lid off, and then I'll move the jars over to a double thickness of tall on the island. The first counter full is finished. I'll just take the jar lifter, move them over, to my double thickness of tile, let them cool off until tomorrow, and then I'll take the rings off and wipe around the ring. And of course, I'll write on the top 19 in salsa. Three hours later, 11 a.m., and I have everything in the jars, which is now it's just processing. It ended up making 32 plus 3, 35 pints, which is great. That'll be enough for a year. I had a little bit left over to refrigerate and to uh, eat.